Welcome back to the ACS Brief from the Frontline Surgeons Voices. And with me today is a soon-to-be surgeon, uh, Peter Delaney. Peter Delaney is currently a, a fourth-year medical student at the University of, of Michigan, who has a very interesting story to tell. Welcome, Peter. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Wexler. An absolute pleasure, and I'm very impressed by the work that you've done with the lay first responders, as I'm sure our audience will be. So could you tell us a little bit about what is the lay first responders international? Absolutely. Uh, so LFR International, uh, as it's known for short, as a nonprofit, we started uh, based on work we had begun in Uganda back in 2016 while I was an undergraduate. Um, the nonprofit itself is focused on emergency medical services development in resource limited settings. Uh, and the majority of our work has been conducted thus far in Sub-Saharan Africa. I actually began the work as an undergrad. I was an EMT back at WashU in St. Louis and ended up going to Uganda in 2016 initially to do uh, an ethnography of trauma, just like looking into local notions of trauma. Um, and having a background as a Red Cross First State instructor in EMT, uh, ended up launching a basic uh, EMS uh, program with some of the local motorcycle taxi drivers. Um, and based on the success of that initial program, which treated uh, nearly 250 uh, patients in the first six months um, and got them to definitive care from the pre-hospital setting, we ended up launching additional programs in uh, a few other countries since. F fantastic, uh, absolutely incredible. So you, you were in college essentially, uh, undergraduate when you came up with this idea. Um, what are some of the other countries in which uh, LFR is now active? Yeah, so after our initial work in, in 2016 in Uganda, um, we launched a program after studying it then over a three year period, we actually found that 75% of the initial participants remained involved voluntarily, which was surprising to us. We had launched it just as a basic pilot. We found there were three primary motivations though. Um, one was uh, altruism. Uh, second was an ability to, to um, sort of change their, their um, social stature in their local community and be seen as more than just a transportation provider. And then finally, uh, we think as a result of that change in image, they ended up making uh, more money by about between 25 to 40 percent more in weekly income. Um, and so there were these financial and, and social uh, motivations to continue responding. And so after three years, we found three quarters of our initial trainees um, were still responding. And so based on that work uh, and recognizing that there was sustainability to this really cost effective model, we launched additional programs in Chad, um, Sierra Leone, with uh, nearly uh, four and a half thousand responders, um, and then are now working uh, on projects in Kenya, Nigeria, the Philippines, and Guatemala. Fantastic. So training that volume of people, like four and a half thousand in one country alone, um, I suppose you could do that remotely, but I, I think you might lose some impact. So Certainly. tell us a little bit about who helps train and, and whether in fact you do use remote education. Yeah, so our biggest pilot to date, as I mentioned, has been Sierra Leone. And so when we went there, we actually set up uh, for what was called the First Responder Coalition of Sierra Leone. And that involved uh, my organization, LFR International, along with the Red Cross, uh, the University of McKinney, uh, a local hospital called uh, the Holy, Holy Spirit Hospital, and then finally a local NGO. Um, and so us as partners uh, banded together and set an agenda for the district, which is about 600,000 people. And then following disease control priorities, guidelines set out a schedule of how many people we'd need to train and then went about recruiting those individuals from the pre-existing transportation infrastructure to participate. Um, and then again, there um, in the first six months found that uh, there were 1,850 uh, patients assisted and, and, and provided care and then also transported to hospital. Absolutely wonderful work. Um, being the scientist you are, I'm, I'm sure you have some quantifiable data on some of the results of, of this Certainly. important initiative. Yeah. And so, you know, 
wherever we've been, uh, we've looked both at um, patient impact as well as you know, knowledge improvement and retention. Um, and on the knowledge improvement retention side, uh, we've really tried to streamline our course down to be um, as streamlined as possible. So we have it at about five and a half hours now. Um, it covers uh, principles and definitions of care, uh, airway breathing, uh, circulation, uh, fracture splinting, um, and then patient transport by motorcycle. Um, and in doing so found that, you know, knowledge tends to be retained uh, with refresher trainings indicated around six months. And then on the patient impact side, we find mortality is generally encountered between five and 10% of the time. So really just illustrative of, of um, how severe a lot of these accidents are. And, um, found that you know, oftentimes about 60% of encounters hemorrhage control is provided. Um, and that uh, we find that responders, uh, again, uh, tend to improve care. Uh, we recently completed a 14 month longitudinal study of uh, changes in the prevalence of pre-hospital care encountered uh, by uh, these providers and found that um, over a 14 month period using a difference in differences approach, um, we found that care had significantly improved in the intervention area. Absolutely wonderful. Well, I congratulate you upon the tremendous work that you've done, and I'm sure you've you. got lots more that you're planning for the future. Yeah, we certainly are. Um, it's been really exciting now, especially um, in Nigeria. We've just uh, partnered with the Federal Road Safety Commission, as well as Health Emergency Initiative, which is a nonprofit there, um, and our, uh, have trained our trainers, uh, as, we, as we like to say, which is our sustainable kind of cohort of local instructors who will continue training once we leave. Um, and then have plans for an in initial uh, small pilot with 350 participants in Lagos, um, after which we hope to um, source uh, increased government funding to expand the program across Lagos State. As a result of the work, we were very fortunate in 2020 to be awarded the Prince Michael International Road Safety Award, uh, which is um, uh, awarded for innovation and global road safety. Um, and so as a result of that, we were subsequently invited to join the United Nations Road Safety uh, Fund's platform on health and road safety. And so now, now we're working with that platform there to help identify financial, uh, sustainable financial models uh, to uh, improve road safety globally in 125 countries. Well, congratulations again on all your superb work. Uh, a lot has been done in a short time at a young age, and I'm sure a lot more will be done in the future. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Dr. Wexler. Appreciate it.